Okay, I got a email from a YouTuber wanting to uh, change out the audio or interstage transformer that's in this Radiola 3 here. And there's the diagram of this thing. So let's take a closer look at this diagram before we go any farther and see how this radio works. Here's the schematic diagram of the Radiola 3. And if you look all the way to the left, here's the inputs for the antenna. Now you choose which one you need for a particular frequency on the AM band. And here's the rest of the circuit for tuning the AM band. Now this tune signal gets applied to the grid of the WD-11. Now this tube amplifies it, comes out of the plate, goes up to a couple of coils. That's more of the feedback circuit. And this coil, that is the variable feedback coil, or sometimes known as the tickler coil. And it goes down to our audio transformer, and we have a dot zero zero one capacitor there. That is an RF bypass. Without that capacitor, that RF would get bunched up at the top of that transformer because RF cannot go through that audio transformer and it would make the sound real mushy. Now the audio that was also detected by that WD-11 tube because the filament and the plate act as a diode, that audio goes through the primary of the audio transformer. Now if you want more information about how AM is detected, I have several videos on this subject. You can just go to my channel and search AM detection or demodulation or just AM and you'll find a bunch of videos on how this works. Now this audio signal gets magnetically coupled of course over to the secondary of the audio transformer which gets applied to the next WD-11 grid. This tube amplifies it enough to drive headphones. Okay, let's ohm out a couple of things here. Looking at this diagram, there's the headphones over here. Let's, uh, I've got a uh, one of the ohm leads, our meter leads, hooked up to minus C, and it should go through the secondary, this transformer, and over to the grid. Now, WD-11, the plate is the big pin, and right across it is a small pin, which is the grid. Then, of course, the other two are filaments. So, let me show minus C here, right there. Got that hooked up. So, the tube closest to the phones would be this one, and that's a large pin there. So, the one right across it will be our connection and it reads 1,500 ohms so that seems like that's good and let's see if we can ohm out something else here oh positive uh, 20 volts through the primary 
through these coils over to the plate of the other tube. So let's see if we can't disconnect this and here I see positive 20 here which is that's on this lead right here okay so we hook that up let this fall down and let's see oh that's right we need to go to the plate of the other tube so the plate is the big pin here oh and we got ohms here now this one is let's see here yeah okay ohms about four about 400 ohms so that's good well I would like to ohm out this all these coils here they're all connected together and go to ground well I'm gonna have to stop the video because I'm gonna have to turn this over to get to this I can't get it from our antenna selection we do have ground right here but we've got capacitors on each one of these so I'm gonna to have to get on the other side of the capacitor and then go to ground be right back okay let's see what we want to do is I found where these three capacitors are connected together on this side and ground is actually B minus right here. It says, and uh, believe it or not, positive A is ground. But B minus is ground. So, let's see here. Here is B minus. Let me clip here and put that back on there we go so B minus and positive A is right there okay don't come off now now there's a bar with three capacitors on it I'll take a uh, still picture of this but that is right here and we are ohming out all those coils and it's about five ohms so that proves that from ground which is B minus through this coil this coil to this coil and to our selector rotor and I put the other probe right here on this section right here so we got five ohms from here to here which is about right because as you can see the coils are uh, not very well there's only a few rounds on each one there's a coil on the inside there and of course there's a coil on the inside over here uh, so it looks good here and this is part of it now we're probably about in the middle yeah so about three ohms there okay so all the coils are good here are the results all the way to the right. We found out that the secondary of this transformer is about 1.5k ohms. Then the primary side, along with the other three coils, is about 400 ohms. And from ground 
to the backside of the three tuning capacitors is 5 ohms. Okay, now we've got all the information we need. And I got the information of the new transformer from the YouTuber. And with that data, I determined that the new Hammond transformer should be installed this way. This transformer can be used in the Radiola 3A, which is a four-tube set. And in that set, 1, 3, and 5 are used. But this is a Radiola 3, just two tubes. So 5 on the transformer, I would just insulate it and just tie it up. I wouldn't cut it off. I would just set it aside, tie it up so it doesn't get in the way. Here is a close-up look at a WD-11's base. This one is an RCA Audiotron. And here's the pins. Thanks for watching.